Alright, so what's up guys? My name is Rodolf and welcome to another one of my hit film tutorials. So a lot of people have been needing this, so we're gonna start talking about the particle engine. The particle engine is pretty much the biggest thing hit film has going for it. It's the funnest thing I like to play around with and I mean the possibilities of that thing is incredible. So so yeah, so of course for this tutorial, I'm not gonna start with a bunch of advanced stuff. We're gonna start in the basics, so if you don't understand the particle engine or you don't understand it very well, then, then yeah, by the end of this tutorial, you'll know some some basic information about it. And I don't know if I'm gonna make this a series. I think I'm gonna make this a series. Probably like one, two, or three parts or something like that. So, so yeah, we're just gonna do a, uh, a good overview of everything in the particle engine. And after this video, you should be able you should be able to understand it a lot more and start doing your own effects and trying what works and what doesn't and experimenting a little bit. So anyways, let's start. So we have the, let's get a new composite shot. And the particle engine is found in 3D, particle simulator. And then it's gonna ask me if I want to add a camera. Of course I do, cause it's a 3D, so add a camera and there it goes so that's the particle engine and pretty much that's that's all you see just a bunch of little bubbles just going around and it's not really looking much right now so so that's how it starts and then you can customize it to get the look you want so if you go to orbit right here you can see that these particles are fully in 3d space which is a great feature for it's gonna make the effects what you make with this come out a lot more convincing let's go to controls and I'm just gonna do a quick overview over everything. So for the layer properties, what you're mostly gonna need here is if you're parenting the layer to something or if you're adding motion blur. If I click here, I add motion blur and you see that these are all blurred out, which is because of they're moving. So they're a little blurred out, but the motion blur also slows down the performance of the computer. So it's always best to, to check it last and just work with everything without the motion blur. And then we have transform and all these these the layer property and the transform it's mostly for i would say the 3d layer of the of the particle like in a sense it's not really affecting the particle itself it's kind of hard to explain but but yeah let me just show you like you can still put down the opacity or if you're moving the position around but it's mostly the particles as a whole for example, if I wanted to do like a smoke trail and like keyframe a point here and then keyframe another point here, I wouldn't be using the transform proper, the transform right here because then it would just keep moving everything as a whole. So that's what the transform does. And if you want to scale or put it down or if you want to rotate and things like that. So yeah, so let's go to material and material. Pretty much, you're only gonna need this for if you have lights in your in your video and if you want light shadows and things like that. But since we don't have anything for this yet, I just not even worry about it for this video. In general, we have the preview, and what the preview will help you do sometimes if you're using like many textures, it can actually make make your computer slow down because of all the textures. So what the preview can do is just, it'll turn all your particles into these little dots and it'll just play faster. So you'll still know where the particles are, but then it won't be the actual texture, you, texture you're using. It'll just be those little dots. So since those bubbles aren't really doing anything to our performance, I just not do it. And the time shift is pretty much how I can explain it is if you go to zero right here and then you start playing, then you see the particles start coming out because the time shift that zero, that's mean that's, that's when the particles start going at, start going and working, whatever. So let's say if I wanted to at the start of the video, let's say you have a shot and at the start of the shot, the, the particles are already there and you don't want to have them start over again. Let's say if I move the time shift to negative four seconds, that means it will start, okay, it's at negative six seconds right now. That means it will start six seconds before the zero line. So at the zero line right here, you can already see that they're already out there and doing their things. Same thing if I moved it forward with positive two seconds, and then you'll see it's not till two seconds that they start going. So, 
So that's just a way to, to choose when you want the particles to start. And let's just put that back to zero seconds because I just wanted to start at zero. All right, and the emitters go to emitter. And the reason that it says emitters and then emitter is because you can actually rename this. For example, if I say I'm going to rename this tutorial, that's because you can actually have many emitters in one in one particle simulator. So that's why if I had another emitter, I could call it a different name. For example, for a preset I'm making that will be available soon for free to you guys. I'm having different elements. I'm having some rocks, some debris, some smoke, some dust wave. So I, I rename all these different things so I can know which which is which and what I'm doing in all of them. So, so that's how you know. So then we have the shape. And for the shape right here, it says point. And what this is pretty much saying is that all the particles are coming out from one point. So you see it like this is just that little point in the middle and all of them are coming out of it. And then we can switch it like there's a circle, quad, sphere, and then cube. For example, if I do the circle, then let's open this up. You can actually see there's a circle right here. And if I go to two views... And then you're gonna see you're not gonna really see it because this is like the front but at the top like the circle will be just a thin line right here and you can actually move the circle make it bigger to suit whatever the need you're doing for example if i go to radius and i make the radius bigger so that's pretty much means all these particles are gonna be coming out from that circle that's that's their or origin point like at first it was just a point and all of them are coming out of the point but then it's the circle so you can also rotate it for example if i want to rotate it and make it that that the particles are coming out vertically all i have to do is rotate the x-axis to about 90 degrees and then you will see like the particles will just be coming out of it sideways and if i go to the top view again now you'll be able to see it because that's how it's coming so so and like i always say experiment with different stuff like tr try them yourselves i mean most of these things i'm teaching you guys is because i had some time and just tried stuff with the program so so let's go ahead and yeah let's let's refresh it yeah let's just go back to being the point and of course like i said there's many different things depending on what you're doing and also we have the tra trajectory and right now it's at random which pretty much means it'll just be random everything is just gonna go out like blah you know it's just going so so we can actually change that if i want it to be a cone the cone will pretty much be just going in one direction like this and once you get do the cone you can actually see that it has more options now like i can rotate it get it if i wanted at this angle like a volcano type thing it's just going up like this so so yeah let's just reset it and then you have disc you show almost everything come out in in like a disc manner like if i go to the top view let me just switch it right here top view and then you'll be able to see that they're just coming out kind of flat not not like the crazy random and let me go back to active camera and then right here you see that we have explode and implode and that's not working because we're, we're using a point but if we're using like a circle or something like that then explode would work and so much means these, are, these particles just explode out so that's always good if you working on some sort of explosion or, or whatever effect you're working on so yeah let's just keep it at point and then and then yeah let's keep it at random and then at random you see the seed like you saw in my muzzle flash tutorial the seed will pretty much make so not everything look the same so it's, it's like this i mean it's pretty much the same setting but it just looks a little different so if you have many different of the same particles in your scene and you don't want them to look the exact same then that's what you would use so apparently you have like 
I guess, a million different possibilities. So that's awesome. Let's just keep it at one. Then you have the general, and then it's, again, active if you want it active, and if you don't want it active, it's pretty simple. And yeah, the particle system, that's where most of the work comes from when it comes to customizing and everything. So let's open this up. And first you see it says general. And then first again, active, whether you want it active. And let's slide this. And affected by deflectors, affected by forces. If you want your particles to be affected by deflectors, then it's already checked here. But let's say for any reason you didn't want it to be affected by forces or deflectors, then you would just do this. And again, for the seed, same thing again. They have so many seeds in this program, it's not even funny. All right, and particles per second. Particles per second is how many particles come out of the point or the circle or the sphere or whatever every second. So right now it's set to 50. So from here to that one second mark, there's already 50 of these little dudes out there. So you can change it to whatever amount you want. If you wanted 100 or 188 right here, then at, 100, then at one second, 188 of these guys already come out. Let's put it at 30. Why? I don't know. I just thought of 30. And then emitter attachment and velocity from emitter. Like I haven't really found these to do anything yet since since the program don't really have a detailed manual at the moment, like I couldn't really read on read up on it. So whenever I find out what these do, I let you know. But so far I just move them around anywhere and I don't see any clear clear change so if you're watching this and you do know what these do be sure to let me know because i would love to know and then yeah that's it for the general so now you have appearance and appearance that's how you're gonna get to choose your texture your color to make your particles look like you want them to look so for example right here that's the default mode which is just a bunch of little white circles but let's say if I want to add texture to it and I go here and okay, I see that rock and I say, okay, I, I want my particles to be a rock. So then you will see it's just this change now to rocks. And I mean, this doesn't look very convincing effect yet, but of course you do some work on it and things like that. So, so yeah, and also a good tip is whenever you're doing particles, like if let's say I'm doing like a concrete explosion, like a video I did, like never just use one rock because then it's not gonna work. And well, it's gonna work, but it's just every rock, rock gonna you look the same. And variation when it comes to blending effects with live action is always good. So for something like this, I'd actually get more, more asphalt pictures. And then so the program will just like mix them up instead of making one particle of everything it just kind of mix them up to to get a good look so so yeah let me delete all of them well let me get one of them yeah let, we'll stay with one so so yeah and intersect layers pretty much like these things are I'm not gonna even spend time to explain them, but just just try them on your own time, see the different effect, like it does do something. It's mostly when where they're coming out, if you wanna intersect them together or if you don't so in billboard it also does something and in these words it's just gonna be hard for me to just get all these words down and explain to you exactly what they are. So so it's always good to after watching a tutorial go experiment with them a little bit and and see what they do and align to motion yeah align to motion is gonna change the angle of the of the particle to the motion they're going in so for example this this guy is going this way so it's switched its angle to match it and that guy is going that way so it's very much it's all the same thing but from since it's just like exploding out like it matches the angle, it's changing the angle, like this is going here, this is going here, this one is going there, and things like that. So again, try them on your own, see what they do. And texture angle is if we didn't like the texture angle of these, we can actually switch them. But as you switch them here, you see that all of them switch at the same time. So it's either going straight up, sideways, down, so all of them go at the same time. And we're gonna talk about how you can change that. And texture angle per second is pretty self-explanatory. If I don't want the textures to just come out and and just look like 
have one angled as they go I can actually switch that and then super much as they go the angle will just kind of shift a little bit so if you're having something like spinning around like that that's how you would do it so let's just bring that back down to zero again and yeah that tutorial is long so now we have blend and blend again you have normal add and multiply normal that's what you're gonna be want to use for something like this because these are like real real textures but you could also choose add or multiply which won't even work in normal backgrounds and then breath color breath color is pretty much this color right here if you put texture color it shift a little bit and that's the color of the actual texture that I used for this but breath color is this right here so it's white so it's not gonna be fully white but it has the white tint to it so if I switched it to like a green tint you would see that switch to a green tint so that's always good if you wanna use the texture color you can but if you wanna do your own colors then you can also let's take that to white and then the alpha source and birth alpha same thing again if the alpha of the particle like that has no alpha because that's transparent but but also you could change that if you for example if you want your alpha to be a little transparent then you you would do that here so let's just keep it at birth alpha since since we're not gonna do much to it anyways so so yeah i'm gonna stop this right here and be sure to come back for part two where you will learn even more stuff so thanks for watching and remember if you like this tutorial subscribe and i have a lot of cool stuff coming like i said earlier i'm working on some presets that i'll be giving out to you guys as we do tutorials so so yeah thank you and have a nice day